Good morning, folks. It's Monday morning. And surprisingly, I'm in a pretty decent mood, so that's great. Today is D-Day. means I get to start my training with my new trainee today. So it shall be interesting, I think. Had a pretty good weekend. I hope you all did as well. I did a lot of work on that cat bat. Love the image, but I'm just I'm just having a tough time with it. Um, that kit was purchased many many months ago before it was realized that the drill supplier or manufacturer or whatever was having some issues with the squares. Um, I don't know if everyone recalls, but there was some, there was some problems. Uh, the squares, um, they're like too small and leaving some gapping. And then like on one edge of the square is almost like a crescent shaped dent. So you've got three straight sides and one bowed in side. So that's leaving some, some you know, gapping type appearance as well. Um, and actually last night in one of the colors that I was using there were nubbies and that's I had never even never seen nubbies on DAC drills before but anyway that's the, that's the only reason I'm not enjoying it at the moment but I'm gonna press on and I'm gonna get it done I'm, om I'm almost halfway done um, but don't everybody freak out like I said I bought this kit a long time ago long time ago they have since I, I believe they have since changed their supplier or either the supplier fix the problem. So anyway, I don't think anyone has anything to worry about. Um, when I, I unboxed a square yesterday, the new Mandy Manzano uh, Make a Wish and Take a Bite, and I didn't examine every single bag. You know, I just kind of briefly went through the colors. So I didn't see any problems with the squares in make a wish just make a wish and take a bite or everything looks immaculate so perfect but now if you haven't watched that unboxing that's fine i'd like it if you did but either way um what i said in that painting is i'm gonna work it as soon as i finish cat bat so i think that's why i'm so motivated to push through and get it done now, I think if Edward had his way, he'd have me finish his Hogwarts because he told me. <laughs> well, I asked him. Because, see, the Hogwarts painting is the one he's supposed to do. Many months ago, I recorded him sitting at the kitchen table working on that. He, I was showing him how to checkerboard. He hadn't touched it since then. I don't know if he's just not interested or if he knows that I'll do it for him or what the deal is. So that is technically a work in progress, but I'll kind of get to it when I get to it. That one's got a lot of confetti cause it's like watercolor, all that white background. And then the image of Hogwarts confetti city. Oh. So we'll just see how that goes. I might see if I've got any little ones left that are around. Oh, I do. I have that Voldemort, and it's around, and that works up pretty quickly. So I might take a break and do a round before starting another big square. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm a free. I'm a free bird. I'll just kind of go with what I feel like. So let me see. That's that's about all I did over the weekend. Well, Saturday, we, we did our grocery shopping, and then we, I wasn't planning on this, but we wound up spending 
a good chunk of the afternoon, probably about five hours, over at um, my mother-in-law's house. She's still going through some of the boxes and stuff in there, and she found some picture albums and other things with like loose pictures. And so I enjoyed going through and looking at those. And Edward was helping his uncle do some of the home repair stuff. What I was planning on doing was just going grocery shopping, putting the stuff up when we got home, and then diamond painting. I really wanted to be further along on cat bat, but it is what it is. It's important to to be there for my I can't say stepmom. I meant mother-in-law. Y'all know what I meant, right? Um, it's important for us to spend time with her and just to kind of reinforce and let her know that, you know, she's still family. Um, want to set up a little, a girl's night for Kendall to go over there and spend the night because that that's the, th that's the thing that they would always do is get together every once in a while for a sleepover and watch scary movies. And we know I, I can't watch the scary movies, so I'm not going. <laughs> but Kendall's excited about going. And um, Pammy said she'd love to to get something planned out and everything for that. So it'll be fun, I think. All right. So this Friday is Valentine's Day. I've had Edward's Valentine's present for I don't know two or three weeks now. So he said he's gonna take me Kendall out to dinner. Which is a lovely idea. I love it. But I am concerned. Going out to a restaurant on Valentine's. It's going to be pretty busy. So I think what we're going to do. Is just when I leave work at 5. I'm just going to meet them there. You know go right at 5 o'clock. Because I, I'm, I'm hoping maybe most people. A. They're not going to want to eat dinner that early. And B. They're going to want to go home from work. Maybe shower. Change. And go out a little bit later. Fingers crossed. That's what I'm hoping. So maybe we'll be okay going there just a few minutes after five o'clock. But I don't know. I've always, I think I've only gone out to eat dinner one time before on Valentine's. One time, and I'm almost 30 years old. Almost 30. I wish almost 40. Um, yeah, and that that was not a good experience because. Uh, we had to stand there and wait for like an hour. It was not fun. But I've, I've, I've always been perfectly content staying at home. As long as I don't have to cook. So do you, do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? Do you have any traditions? Do y'all go out? Or do you stay home? Do something like totally unique and romantical. <laughs> I'm not the romantic. Edward's the romantic. Sometimes I just I roll my eyes and just go with the flow. He's wanting to do something romantic, so oh, oh, okay, go ahead. I don't know. I guess I'm really not an average female and as far as that's concerned I, I love flowers but I'm kind of got mixed opinion on flowers like I love them it's such an awesome gesture but it's so short term and expensive very expensive I would rather, instead of calling up a florist or stopping at the Walmart and grabbing a bouquet of flowers, I would rather someone find like a blooming flower on the side of the highway, you know, just a weed, but it's a beautiful flower stop and you know, pick something like that. Pick it themselves. 
You know what I mean? That is, that means more to me than spending fifty, sixty dollars. It's the it's the time and the effort put into it. Does that make sense? Oh, we got construction on this highway. I'm not zoom zooming today. It's only 804, so it's not too bad. Maybe I'll get there by 810. Yeah, I'm, 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 everything in me is gonna be tested today because I know that this new employee is not gonna be set up correctly in the computer systems. I'm gonna have to hunt all that down. All, all today is gonna be is technology related. And y'all know how I am with technology. Not good. <laughs> so, say a little prayer for me. Oh, goodness. So, I don't know, maybe it won't be so bad. I've got one person I work with that is our computer person that we tend to go to for help before we try to contact the IT department because sometimes it just takes them so long to get back to us. You know, if there's something going on that's <clears throat> preventing us from getting work done, we can try to resolve it ourselves quickly or sit there for up to two, three hours waiting. And it, that's, that is the one thing about technology that I think hurts us as a society. Maybe not, I'm, I'm just speaking in general. But it's like, think about this. If, if you lose your phone and you have to wait a couple of days for a replacement. Or if your power goes out and you don't have internet service at home. Or something like that. Any little thing that, any glitch in the matrix. Phone, tablet, desktop computer, laptop. Navigation system probably. I don't know. Anything that uses <clears throat> technology. something goes wrong and we have to do without we're hurting right we are hurting I just I don't know Edward says off and on that he'd love to go back to the, you know the good old days back in the you know was it the late 1800s or the early 1900s or something like that I look at him and I say, well, have fun without me because I am not going to be where I don't have air conditioning. Air conditioning is my one stipulation. I need air conditioning. I will time travel anywhere with you as long as we can take air conditioning with us. I don't think that's how that works, though. In my mind, I'll make it work that way. So, yeah, even like, he keeps talking about going camping sometimes. I'm like, dude, do you remember who you married? <laughs> I don't like bugs. I don't like the heat. You know, I will go camping with you if we're in a camper with air conditioning. Away from bugs. But he's talking about like making beds out of piles of leaves and sleeping under the stars. Which now, romantic again, see? How in the world we ever linked up and made this whole thing work is beyond me. I don't know. We are we are a lot alike, but we are really different in so many ways too. So maybe that's why it works. I don't know. Alright, Matt work. I'll check in with you guys later. Good gloomy morning. Tuesday, 64 degrees here, overcast and sprinkly, so yuck. I was in a very good mood until about mm, 10 minutes ago. It is currently 8.08 .08 in the a.m. The school bus literally just showed up. The school bus is supposed to be there at quarter till eight. That damn bus was 24 minutes late today. 
I am so frustrated. Can we please start a GoFundMe for this damn school to get some repair work done on her school bus? Because it, was, it wasn't even the actual school bus she's supposed to go on. It was a totally different one because her bus broke down again. I, I'm, I'm beyond frustrated with this foolishness around here, y'all. They put, they changed the school hours, so now I'm late to work every day. They don't have enough buses. They don't have enough bus drivers, and apparently they can't afford to get their shit fixed. I'm sorry, but that is annoying AF. I mean, I don't, I just fully don't understand. What is this county doing? Are they only taking care of certain schools in the district? And leaving this one way down here to suffer? I mean, what gives? <sighs> okay. I need to go into work. Try to be positive. Have another good day. I had a really good day yesterday. I want to have another good day today. I don't want to carry this baggage in there. Uh, thanks for letting me vent and get that out. Feels a little bit better to get that off my chest. Oh, if this is raided, I will be Princess Parking today. Princess Parking is, you know, parking right outside the office door. We're not supposed to, but I'm not going to walk a quarter of a mile in the rain. Nope. I ain't doing it. I didn't do any cat bat last night. Go figure. And I was a little bit too ambitious when I thought I'd be able to film handfuls of videos to release slowly, you know, throughout the week. Because, you know, I didn't have as much time to myself last weekend as I thought. I thought I was gonna have several hours on Saturday and I didn't. I only had a few hours on Sunday and because of storage issues on my phone and then creating the videos and all this other mess time wise I didn't have time. I only had time for two. So, but that's better than I've been doing. I'm gonna talk to Edward and see if we can't work something out where he and Kendall leave the house and I have some time alone to do some filming because I just can't I just can't do it with him there they distract me or they're loud or they want to be involved and I get off track and oh, I don't know we got to figure it out so today I actually need to go and look about getting Kendall's little valentine from us. Well, if it's raining, I might not do it. I don't want to go out in the rain. But, I'm going to have to leave work, at, actually leave the building at lunch, which I usually don't do. Typically, I'm stay, I stay in the office from the moment I arrive till it's time to go home. I don't leave for lunch very often at all. Because I, I want to take a short lunch. They, you know, we're allowed for an hour, but I only take about 30 minutes, you know, because I'm arriving so late every morning, I've got to make up that time somewhere, and I don't need a full hour. It doesn't take me that long to eat a sandwich or whatever it is I'm taking for lunch. So, hmm. if it's raining, I'll just try to go tomorrow. I'm such a procrastinator. I keep putting it off and putting it off. Oh well. It'll get done when it gets done, right? Yep. Don't really have anything else to report. Other than I guess just let me say if um if you have a diamond painting that you're looking for, guys, you know, join that join that Facebook group for the buy sell trade. Oh, gosh. Come on. Traffic. Yeah, if you have an image that you really want, check into 
there's more than one buy sell trade group if you try in one group and, no, and nobody has it try it in another one or post in multiple ones oh Jesus now this jackass wants to get over here hmm yeah I'm so sorry for making you guys car sick right there that was that was crazy here is that better now we can see I wonder if this truck might be a little lost because he's he's going so slow back there maybe he's got to make this turn up here I don't know but say la vie I did my first Miami Monday. Yeah, a few people watched it. I got a, a few, a couple little comments on there. So, as long as one person's enjoying it, I'll keep doing it. And I enjoy it, you know? It's fun for me. So, maybe it'll catch on a little bit more. Because I know there were other people that enjoyed the Golden Girls. They just haven't found it yet, maybe. Maybe it's in their queue to watch later. <laughs> I don't know. I have that problem sometimes with that instant gratification. It's like, I want to see results now. <laughs> I want feedback now. Uh, nope. Gotta wait. Gotta be patient. <sighs> I brought me a banana peanut butter miracle whip sandwich for today. I really wish I could send Rachel some miracle whip. They do have individual packets available, but I've only I found them on Amazon, and it's it's twenty dollars for a huge box. I don't need a huge box. I just need like a couple of little packets. And I think most restaurants around here they only have the mayo, and you don't want to try this sandwich with mayo. I, I'm not that brave. I don't think Miracle Whip's just got a totally different flavor to it. Okay, you are getting on my nerves. Let's go. Jeez Louise. Don't be in the zoom zoom lane if you're not going to zoom zoom. so I can tell you guys all about it when I get off work. Maybe. One can hope. Um, Alright. Well, have a good day. Let's talk to everyone later. Whew. Write it down. 8.06 a.m. Wednesday morning. School bus just showed up. 21 minutes late. Oh, doggy, get out of the road. a doggy. Oh, there's another doggy running loose. What is up? Please be responsible with your pets. Please. It breaks my heart seeing all these cute animals running loose. It scares me. It actually takes me back to a couple of traumatic incidences I had in my life. One of them being, you know, my first ever dog. Now, he lived in our fenced-in backyard, the house I grew up in, but he managed to get out one day right as we were leaving the house within like, couldn't have been more than five minutes. We were leaving to go over to my grandmother's house. She was very ill and she was right before being put into hospice care. Um, but we were going to go visit with her and this is the only time since I had that dog the only time I ever left the house without telling him that I would be back and I think that damaged me on some level but I left the house didn't tell him that I'd be back this is the only time he gets out of the fence somehow I still have no idea how I got out of the fence he must have figured out how to climb it or something there was no holes no gaps no nothing but he gets out of the fence and got hit by a car and i'm the one that found him because we lived on like a, a pretty major highway um 
it was just a, a, a two lane highway, but there was a lot of traffic. Um, after driving towards my grandmother's for a few minutes, my mom realized she didn't have the house key. So we had to turn around and go back home for the key. And so we turned around and that's when getting ready to turn into our neighborhood to get to our driveway, I saw him laying on the side of the road dead. I was probably 16. That was my baby. That little dog, I'm telling you, he was just a little mutt. He, he had the black and white and brown markings of like a, a German Shepherd or a Bernese Mountain Dog. Those shades of brown and white and black. But he was a little teeny tiny. He might have weighed like 15, 20 pounds. He was probably about, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half tall. Like from to the top of his head. Um, his ears pointed up. And he was short hair. But he was a heavy shedder. So, I don't know. He was just a mutt. But, um... He really didn't like anybody but me. It was the craziest thing. Because I remember I'd be outside with my brothers. And this little dog, his name was Diamond. This little dog would, like, terrorize them almost. He'd, like do drive-bys or run-bys and like nip them and keep on going you know he's like running 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 nip run 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 you know just so they couldn't get their hands on him but with me he was very loving and sweet and just a cuddle bug except for when I gave him a bath he hated a bath he hated the b-word you couldn't you couldn't say the b-word around him uh, but, yeah my first ever experience with dogs and I immediately fell in love and knew that this was going to be like this is the animal for me this is my lifetime love right here is dogs and after he died is when we wound up going to a golden retriever rescue and rescued and um if she was fully grown she was an adult female but she was only maybe two years old two or three years old she was she's still pretty young um i have no idea why the, her previous owners gave her up but i'm telling y'all when we, we took her home originally we were just gonna foster her but that after that first night, the very next day, my mom called the rescue and said, I want to keep her because she was just that great. She was house trained in 24 hours. Like she did not, well, maybe that was because wherever she was before, she was used to going outside. I don't know. But we still like to say she was house trained in 24 hours. She, I don't know that she ever had any accidents, which is pretty crazy, but it's awesome. But so yeah, we had her for many years. Um, she was supposed to be my dog. Since my dog is the one that died. But she ended up becoming my mother's dog. Because after a few years was around that time where I left to go to college and do the whole college experience thing that I failed at or gave up on whatever. And then I lived at home for a little while, and then I moved out, and so I just wasn't there. So, yeah, she became my mom's dog, which was fine, because my mom absolutely adored her. Um, had her up until she was at the end of her life. Um, and it just reached that unfortunate stage where her body was just shutting down on her. She, I don't remember how old she was. She was maybe... 13, 14, something like that, which is a pretty, pretty long lifespan for a large dog, but, um, so after that dog, and, and, and okay, so the, my mom had the golden retriever, but meanwhile, I moved out, and I've shacked up with someone, right, so we ended up having a dog that also wasn't his originally, it was his brother's, but then his brother got married and moved out and left the dog with him. So the dog became ours. But then that was uh, when I was um, with Leslie. 
um, and then he died and I kept the dog with me then she got very sick she um, developed cancer and just from the location of the tumor it was right by her butt the vet said that uh, he could operate and try to remove it but there's no guarantee that he would get it all and there is a very high chance that she would lose control of her bowels um, so after talking it through with him exploring different options and just looking at her overall because um, she was an older dog she didn't have any teeth at the bottom she was a boxer pit bull mix her bottom teeth were all were all gone um but just looking at it and i was like i can't let the end of her life be where she is in diapers and just you know not living her best life you know because at the, the way it was she was fine you know she just happened to have cancer so it was either continue on and she's having a great quality of life she's not in pain she's not anything like that or do surgery on her have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars risk her ending up being in diapers and her still end up having cancer. See what I'm saying? The the risk, it wasn't worth it. Um, so, she just continued having a great life. And the cancer continued to grow. And when she went in for a checkup, they discovered that it had spread to her breast tissue. And so, that's when we knew it was... Um, it was really kind of getting to that point where she wasn't going to have a good quality of life too much longer. And maybe, it was maybe about six or seven more months I think I had with her. <clears throat> um, until I had to make that hard decision. Because she was suffering in the end. And I don't want any of my animals to suffer. So... As much as it sucks, as much as I absolutely hate it, I detest it, and I, I, keeping them around is selfish for me, but I need to let my love for them be stronger than my love for myself, if that makes sense. I don't want to, I don't want to see them in pain and suffering, I just can't, and so I was in there with her very very difficult very very hard thing to do but I couldn't let her be alone I just I couldn't do it I could I wouldn't have been able to live with myself as much as it sucked I'm glad I was in there with her so, boy we're talking about darkness this morning I'm sorry oh it's good to start talking about the dogs running loose that's why let's see okay so after her after her was I was already in my my new house the house I'm currently living in so after her I decided I don't want any more I don't want any pets for a while but my mom was ready for a dog but she was dead set she and my stepdad both dead set on golden retriever they fell in love with that breed and it is a great breed they, they're a little high maintenance though because if you don't brush them on the regular they're gonna have some awful knots and I hate to see a knotted up dog don't buy a dog that needs regular grooming if you're not gonna groom them end of story so anyway um, I found someone that it just had a litter of puppies through a friend of mine so I got in touch with them and made an arrangement for my mom to go with me out there so she could pick out one and that is the dog that she had actually she still has to this day 
Um, she's developed um, cataracts, I think. And she's pretty young. I think she's eight years old. Or is she six? I don't know. Whatever age she is, the vet said that, it, you know, he's surprised that she's developed problems with her eyes because she's awfully young to have eye problems. But she still managed to get around okay, so it's fine. She still loved very, very much. Um, my brother had a dog, but she passed away a year ago, I think. She, she was old. Um, then, after the pit boxer... I ended up getting my Kalani. She was a German Shepherd and Cocker Spaniel mix. I got her because someone that my stepdad worked with at the time, their dog, their dog got knocked up by their neighbor's dog on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, they were eating at the table eating Thanksgiving dinner and they look out the window and oh, there's the dogs going at it. Our neighbor's dog jumped up the fence. I'm like, doesn't matter if you have a fence, spay and neuter your pet. But Anyway, so they had puppies to deal with. So my stepdad brought her to their house. But because of the town they live in, there is a, a law or a rule or whatever. They can't have more than two inside pets. So my mom told him as soon as he, came, he walked to the door and he had, her, had the puppy bundled in his arms, my mom said, nope, don't bring her over here. I don't want to see her. We can't have her. We can't keep her. So anyway, my mom called me and was like, Jimmy brought home this dog. We can't keep her. Do you want her? And I was like, well, not really, Mom. I was kind of enjoying not having a pet because I was still trying to get over what had just happened with Josie. But I went over there anyway, and it was a Valentine's Day. I went over there, and as soon as I saw Kalani, I fell in love. She was just this little, little fur ball. Um, mostly black. She had a little bit of brown and a little bit of white markings. The very tip of her tail was white. And her eyes were still blue. So she was very, very young still. But um, ended up saying, okay, I'll keep her. And once my mom found that I was going to keep her, then my mom decided, okay, now I will pet her and, and fall in love with her. <laughs> mom didn't want to get attached to her if she wasn't going to stay in the family. So... I kept her, so then when she was like three years old is when I ended up getting Uno, Uno, the dog I have right now, my little white chihuahua. Um, the people I got him from had a, a breeding male and female that they, this was like their third or fourth litter, but they just kept breeding them just because they loved the dog. They would breed them, when the puppies were old enough, they'd give them away. That bothers me a little bit. Like, I worry about where some of those other puppies are. But, actually, I know where some of them are. Some of my friends have some of them. But, anyway. But then, a year and a half, almost two years ago, um, my Kalani was at the end of her life. I had to have her put down. I was in there with her. Very, very difficult for me. So, now I've just got my Uno. So, now that I'm at work... That is the story of all my animal loves. So, hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Thursday morning, 8.07. Mark it down. Bus late again. I just need to come to terms with the fact that it's going to be late for the rest of this school year. And just calm down about it. Because there's it's one of those things that's out of my control. There's nothing I can do. But it's so frustrating! Oh well. What are you gonna do? So, it's the day before Valentine's Day. And I'm remembering several years ago, I was posting stuff on Facebook like, who cares? Valentine, Schmalentine, you know, big whoop, all that kind of stuff. But, I was single, and full honesty, I was a little bitter, you know. But now, I've got Edward and Kendall, and so no, I'm no longer single, but I'm probably still slightly bitter. 
just, just a little bit, but I don't know why. It's still not a, a, a day that I feel like I want to be lavish with all these gifts and chocolates and flowers and stuffed teddy bears and all that stuff. I just don't, I don't know. Is it because maybe I'm just not a girly girl? I don't know. Maybe, maybe those type of things, they aren't my love language. Because, you, you know, there's different love languages. Um, you know, my love language is, you know, that Edward does. You know, he loads up the dishwasher. Or he empties the dishwasher. He cooks for us. Um, you know, if I ask him to do something, you know, he'll do it. So, it's like, I, I guess I like time and effort not so much money being spent on things if the, and I'm not, I don't know I don't know that's just me and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that if you like the flowers and the candies and all that that's wonderful I don't I mean it's just not me <laughs> but he says uh What was it? He said, um, we got Kendall's Valentine to give to her. And, um, and so I just made a joke with him. Well, it was kind of, it was a joke, but it, I was serious. I said, and thank you for my taking us to dinner tomorrow night. That'll go perfect with the other things you got me for Valentine's Day. I just tried to slip it in there, you know. And at first he didn't react, but then as soon as he realized what I said, he kind of squinted his eyes at me and he said, what else did I get you? <laughs> he said, well, I, don't, I don't know. You have to wait and see. Be surprised with me. Um, I guess maybe I'll have a delivery tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll all be surprised. No, seriously, we'll be surprised because I only remember one that I, one that I ordered, but I know there's more than one. <laughs> I'm so bad. Okay, I have to stop, y'all. I have to stop. I need an intervention, for real. I have to stop. We've got some big things coming up for us as a family, um, probably in the next, um, about another month and a half to two months so I really gotta rein it back in and get under control and we're also very excited and can't wait so. Oh, excuse me. so this is the week I did have um, start training um, someone at work and it's going great I think you know she comes from a background in the same line of work so the ideas and the processes she's familiar with is just learning the computer programs that we use um, so I think that makes my job of training that much easier you know but um, in addition to training her they have kind of restructured us now so that all of the people that do the same job function that I do anytime they have a question they're supposed to come to me or two other ladies that have been doing this job for many years I guess on this particular team at work we're the more seasoned so all the newer ones are supposed to come to us for help and that's fine um, it, I'm, I'm finding it a challenge, which is great, because I had, I was, I was stuck in a rut, you know, it was the same thing day in and day out, and I was just stuck, you know, bored, whatever you want to call it, but, um, so now this is a challenge, but also I'm, I'm getting to n know and actually interacting with people that I've worked in the same office with for months, but have never really spoken to. You know, 
we, we can't stand around and talk around the water cooler or just hang out at each other's desks and chit chat because we got to be sitting at our desk and working. But if someone needs me to help them with something, that's an interaction and that's building a relationship, you know? So that's kind of cool. Um, but we're also helping some of the people that are in our other office in Texas. And so that's having to be done by phone and email. So that's a challenge, trying to train someone that way. But I think I'm making it work for the couple of things that I've had to do so far this week. At least I hope I am. It's, it's a lot of pressure being a trainer because, or for me at least, I, I'm, I'm an empath. So I, I kind of absorb the emotions of the people around me and I feel it deeply. And so it's like, if I feel, or if, if I see that they are struggling, then, then I feel like I am failing because I'm not effectively teaching them anything. So I worry about that. I don't want someone to fail at doing this job because I was ineffective. But hopefully that's not gonna happen. Hopefully, hopefully it'll stick. Because I really do try to find ways to explain things so that they make sense. I'll explain it one way, and then if they still don't understand, then I will go back and rethink and say, okay, well, think about it this way and try something else. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my methods aren't the best, but I'm trying. And I found out yesterday that I've been doing something wrong for who knows how long. So even I'm learning through this process, which is great because I need to learn as well but also I need it's kind of like I need to know ahead of time before I train somebody the wrong way which I did effectively you know yesterday with one particular item so I, all I can do is just go back and say hold on wait a minute forget what I said about this thing this is the right way uh, it's a challenge but it, it's it's stressful it's fast-paced and it's challenging but I've been there for what like 14 years so obviously it's not that bad to me or else I'd, I'd have been gone you know but anytime you go through change it's hard and we've gone through a lot of change in the last three years lots of management turnover and even like upper 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 management type of people retiring or going on to other opportunities or I mean you name it it's all kinds of things but I'm still a little old main same old little old position I've been in for this 14 years what are you gonna do so this has been work talk very boring I apologize that's just kind of what my mind was laying on this morning um, just briefly in other exciting news I am working on finalizing out some of the finer details and I will be doing my first collaboration with another YouTube creator and I'm excited because I think she's fabulous. I think our project is going to be fabulous. I think the idea is fabulous. And I really think and hope that all of you guys that watch and join in with us will have a good time. We'll learn something. We'll maybe, you know, you know, just uh, really want to take part in, in what we have to offer. So stay tuned for that because uh, I'm not sure when it'll be starting but it'll be it'll be maybe another month or so i don't know like i said ironing out all the details but i got a, i've got my first ever collaboration coming up so i'm excited about that um so yeah stay tuned uh this weekend i have asked for edward and kendall to get out of the house so i can have a few hours to myself 
so I can do some filming without being interrupted because obviously my attempt at doing a blitzkrieg of filming numerous videos last weekend failed. I didn't have good time management. So I might not be able to get five or six videos done and all like that, but at least I've done two. I had two go up so far this week, and I think I will make this the last entry for this today and try to put it up tonight because tomorrow's Valentine's Day and I don't know how much everyone's going to be doing but then again people might just be at home and enjoying a lovely Valentine's Day with YouTube. I don't know but anyway I'm not going to be I'm going to be occupied tomorrow. We have a family Valentine's dinner tomorrow night and so I think I want to focus on spending time with them and not trying to edit my video. That's all I'm saying. That's all I mean with that. I ramble so much. Jeez. All right. Yep. I'm getting close to work, so we'll go ahead and hang it up. See, I got my bananas. I'm good to go for my my potassium today, and uh, still don't eat a banana facing anybody. Uh, can't do it. So. Alright, I will catch you guys soon. Take care.